Welcome back to Unlimited Reads. My name is Chris, and thanks for joining me as I wrap up yet another week as we hit the halfway mark for September already. Hard to believe, isn't it? But let's start with what I got up to. I did put up my spoiler-free review of Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, the first of his four secret projects. I enjoyed the hell out of it, and this video has done pretty well, uh, considering uh, I think it's up to over 100 views at the moment, which for my channel is brilliant. I think with this one, when I did a Google Google search on Tress of the Emerald Sea, I ranked number nine in the search results under Google, and I ranked pretty high in the YouTube search as well. So uh, thank you, YouTube, for uh, putting my thumbnail out there for people to see and to get some exposure, which is very much appreciated. It's just nice to have a lot of eyes on book reviews that I do. And I've noticed that in the last few months, a couple of my videos have actually done this, which is very, very encouraging for the channel moving forward. It just gives me a little bit more confidence that as I go on, uh, it gives me uh, an indication that the thumbnails I am creating do catch the eye, which is good, so I won't be changing anything about the thumbnails anytime soon. One thing I have added to the thumbnails that you may have noticed is a border around the edge, which tends to make it stand out from the rest, uh, which is uh, something I'll continue to do. But uh, the book itself was brilliant. It was uh, influenced by that classic movie, The Princess Bride, which was evident throughout. I just loved the character of Tress. I loved the Cosmere Connection. It was just a fantastic read, and I don't think anyone dislikes the book if you have a look at uh, book reviews on BookTube and social media. But uh, yeah, so glad I picked that one up because I am advancing very well with my Cosmia journey. I plan on reading um, The Frugal Wizard's Guide to Survival in Medieval England as my next Cosmia read, and then I've got um, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter, The Sunlit Man, uh, Mistborn Secret History, Rhythm of War and then I'm ready for Wind and Truth which is Stormlight Book 5 which is released in December. I cannot wait. As to what I read this week and am still reading, I am about halfway through of Blood and Fire, book one of the Bound and the Broken series by Ryan Carhill. I've only got to the halfway point uh, this week and now I haven't had a lot of time to set aside for reading. Things have been pretty hectic. I have got a bit of time this weekend and today being Sunday I should be able to get three quarters of the way through and then hopefully finish on Monday and I might be able to put up my review mid next week but let me just say I'm enjoying the hell out of it. It's interesting because he does draw inspiration from Lord of the Rings and there are familiar tropes in this book but he still made them his own which is very very hard to do and uh, I'm loving the mythology and the lore and uh, the mystery and the chosen one trope in here uh, in Kaelin who is a character I am liking a lot and uh, it's very very pacey it's very easy to read it's very accessible uh, very simple language is used but uh, uh, Ryan Carhill, Carhill gets the point across very, very well, and uh, it makes for quick reading. When I manage to find some time to sit down and read through it, I can actually uh, bang out a few pages, but it is a very, very good book, and I am enjoying it immensely, and uh, it won't be long before I'll be picking up book two, because I am enjoying uh, Ryan Carhill's writing style, and uh, he uh, spins a damn good yarn. Also this week, we saw the trailer drop for Salem's Lot, which is the latest adaptation from Stephen King's legendary novel. I have a few mixed feelings about it. I've watched some people's reactions to the trailer. It's, uh, it's very interesting that it's set in a 1970s setting. You can tell by the clothes and the haircuts. Uh, I think it's interesting, uh, the casting choices. I'm really uh, happy with what I saw in Father Callahan. Ben Mears, unfortunately. I don't know how Bill Pullman's son is going to go in the role. He played Bob from Top Gun Maverick, if you remember that one. Uh, just, you know, some people think he's just not quite right because as you're, when you've read the book, you have a certain image of Ben Mears in your head and uh, he just doesn't quite fit that in my opinion. So I'm not quite sure how he's going to go. It was only a very short trailer, so uh, his performance uh, will reveal how well he does. But uh, I like the mystery, how you didn't actually see uh, Barlow, and uh, I really like the design of the Marsden house, which uh, looks like how I pictured it in the book. Um, it all looks okay, and I'm cautiously optimistic because uh, yeah, there's been a couple of adaptations, obviously, and uh, we'll see how this one goes. But um, I remember the uh, 
remake in 2002, I think it was, with, with Rob Lowe uh, in the role as Ben Mears, which was a better casting choice. That uh, movie was actually filmed less than 100 miles away from me, which is very, very interesting in the town of Creswick. But um, I'm cautiously optimistic. I am going to watch it. Uh, when it uh, comes out and uh, I uh, will share my thoughts right here on the channel about it and just before I wrap things up I have some more show and tell for you this week I made three purchases the first of which is called Shadow State by MP Woodward a new contributor to the Ryan verse which I am a little bit nervous about you know my thoughts on that if you've been following me on the channel for a little while it's the latest Jack Ryan Jr. novel and this one um, I'll read the back of it to you because it sounds really really good no extraction, no support, just jungle and the hunt. The vibrant economy of the new Vietnam is a shiny lure for Western capital. Companies are racing to uncover ideal opportunities, not wanting to be left behind. Henley Associates has sent their best analyst, Jack Ryan Jr., to mine for investment gold, and he may have found some in a rare earth mining company called Geotech. But a trip with a Henley colleague to observe the company's operation takes a treacherous turn when the helicopter is shot down. Some things haven't changed and Vietnam is still the plaything of powerful neighbours. The Chinese are determined to keep Jack from finding the truth about what is exactly being processed at the isolated factory. Now Jack is in a race for his life. He's got to stay one step ahead of a pack of killers while supporting his wounded friend and he'll get no help from the government because in the jungle it's the shadow state that rules. Sounds pretty awesome. Can't wait to get stuck in. Maybe next week for this one. But uh, yeah, a bit, bit nervous. It's a new Ryan verse contributor, but I'm sure it'll be fine. And I'll be sure to let you know my thoughts on it right here on the channel. Okay, the next one I picked up was a uh, new fantasy title. Now, this one is actually called The Gods Below by Andrea Stewart. Now, you could be forgiven for buying this book for the cover alone, and it did influence my purchase, let's be honest here. But um, this author, Andrea Stewart, she did write the um, a series I knew about a little bit, which is The Drowning Empire, which is The Bone Shard Daughter, The Bone Shard Emperor, and The Bone Shard War. Um, haven't read those ones, but this one looked really, really cool, and I'll Read the back of this to you. After a divine war shattered the world, humanity struck a pact with the god Clune. In return for magical gems, Clune would restore the world to its former glory, but as each land is transformed, so too are its people changed into strange new forms. Hakara is not willing to pay such a price. Desperate to protect herself and her sister Rasha, she flees her homeland, but tragedy strikes and Hakara is forced to abandon Rasha. Yet when Hakara discovers she can channel the power of the magical gems, she's invited to join a clandestine plot to destroy the God Pact. To win Hakara to their cause, the conspirators reveal a startling secret. Rasha is alive and they can help rescue her, but only if Hakara goes to war against a god. Sounds pretty awesome. Nice and meaty. Uh, it's about, you know, 500 pages, but this cover art, absolutely sensational. And uh, part of me was influenced by that. So there you go. And the last book I brought was uh, Matt Haig's latest one called The Life Impossible, which after enjoying the Midnight Library a lot, I had to pick this one, up, this one up. And look at the cover. It's just nice and blue. It's about a woman's journey to the Greek islands, I think, and uh, how uh, a new view can just change everything in your life. That's all I know about it. There aren't many cover blurbs around, but uh, yeah, should be a pretty good read. Lots of chapters, and um, Matt Haig's writing style is awesome. So guys that is it for my weekly wrap up for this week thank you very much for watching and if you like my videos feel free to subscribe but uh, until the next video guys happy reading